Now, as mentioned earlier, let's go to this conversation. There have been several videos during the rounds on social media purporting to be of some SABC News anchors advertising a project by Elon Musk. Now, these ads are running on Facebook and YouTube mostly. Now, these deep fakes claim you can make as much as 30,000 rand a day and sometimes even more, and that some prominent business people have already invested in this. But if you haven't seen them, have a look. Breaking news. Elon Musk's project has alarmed the government and major banks. He has introduced a new secret investment that has made hundreds of people very rich. Last week, he appeared in public and announced his new project, which, according to him, can turn anyone into a millionaire within five to six months without any difficulties and with minimal investment of $250. The innovative businessman urged everyone to seize this incredible opportunity. And of course, a few minutes after the interview ended, the government called and requested that the interview not be broadcast, but it was too late. I am providing access to my platform for my fellow countrymen, where I come from. To get the system up and running, a minimum investment of $250 is required. This is the minimum amount at which the system will start making profitable trades in the stock and cryptocurrency markets. To gain access, you need to register on the official website Wait for a manager's call who will assist you in the subsequent steps, including account funding and program setup. No longer need to work. Such a statement was made by Elon Musk as he opens access to his new development, which generates money automatically using artificial intelligence as a trader. Uh, I am providing access to my platform for my fellow countrymen, where I come from. To get the system up and running, a minimum investment of 4,700 Rand is required. This is the minimum amount at which the system will start making profitable trades in the stock and cryptocurrency markets. To gain access, you need to register on the official website, wait for a manager's call who will assist you in the subsequent steps, including account funding and program setup. And we can tell you that these videos are fake. Uh, we certainly are not, as anchors, even endorsing this. We don't even know what it's about. But let's have this conversation with SABC Group Executive for News and Current Affairs, Moshe Munara, who is joining us in studio. Thank you so much for your time. Brilliant. Your reaction to the videos, because you've been <laughs> seeing a lot of them coming yeah. from us. Look, my, my, my reaction is that um, it's scary. But uh, of the most concerning aspect of it is the fact that they are using my colleagues' uh, faces and voices, knowing that because they are from an institution or a broadcaster with some credibility where there is public trust. And my worries one is that uh, anything that then that public trust is affecting us as SABC News, is affecting the anchors who are seen as leading journalists, who are seen as um you know um whatever they express that there is should be some legitimacy to it and the, the the most worrying thing i think is the fact that we are in the era where we 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 we, we want to see what is the good and um you know the most benefiting about artificial intelligence but the worries one is that if artificial intelligence is going to be abused this way um, then it really makes people to be skeptical, especially given the fact that there will be the good and the positives that we need to um, embrace and, 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 and accept. And um, look, as, as, as we see um, news is that it's worrying because, f you know, for the first time when it happens with one of our anchors on Morning Life, it's mm -hmm. something that we investigated. And the most um, difficult thing is the inability to trace, the inability to trace the roots and the source and i think that's the most dangerous thing because they keep on p p popping up and the are using or abusing the vulnerability of members of the public who are desperate to invest and are seeing the most credible public figures like yourself um elon musk and other colleagues and they think this is this should be true and mm. my worries one is that also it dents our credibility because our brand is something that, as a public broadcaster, is something that people trust. And I wonder then, um, you know, because it's so difficult to trace, what do we do in, in, in such a situation as a, as a public broadcaster? Look, like I said, it's, it's a difficult one because if we were able to trace, we'll um, actually block it. I remember <clears throat> um, some times ago, um, even before AI, um, there used to be this kind of like... Um, scams coming through programmatic advertising mm. on um, our um, uh, previous online publications. 
and you would block that particular um, um, you know, per, per, per advertising and it will just pop up in a different manner. Look, the only thing that we, we, we can do is just to go public about it, to yeah. just ensure and um, say to members of the public, you know, as a public broadcaster or employees of public broadcaster, it's against our editorial policy, it's against our public mandate to be advertising products, especially this kind of products on behalf of people that to actually we, you know, it's, it's just to educate, it's just to go on, a com on campaigns that really tell um, our audience to say we do not get involved in this kind of things. And finally then, let's reiterate the message to someone at home who's sitting and is probably thinking or has not even seen it. What do they do? Do they invest? Do they not? What does the public broadcaster say directly to them? The uh, SABC News will say to them, we do not propagate or we are not agencies or agents of any product or any institution that really says you must invest in this product or that product. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in the business of news and the, um, what we do is based on credibility, on accuracy, on um, seeking the truth and on the trust that we have built um, throughout the years between us and the public. And we would want to restore that trust to say some of these videos that you see where our um, employees or anyone associated with us saying that invest in that or is not our policy and it's against our editorial policy to call for people to invest in, in, in such um, schemes. So you've heard it first here again, um, we're saying do not invest, do not invest in that. The same way as Leanne, of course, has been at pains to describe what has been done to her as well. Do not invest. Iman is now the latest one who has been used as well to try and sell this particular scam purporting to be by Elon Musk. So you've heard it from us. Do not invest. Please make sure that your hard-earned money is not lost to these criminals. But let me thank you so much for your time, Mosh. That is SABC Group Executive thank for News and Current Affairs, Mushashwet Munare. And Iman is standing by to talk to an AI expert about all of this and how it gets done. Thanks, Bungire. So let's get that specialist opinion for you now. And joining us is Lavina Ramkisun, who is also an advisor on all things AI uh, related for the African Union, amongst others. Lavina, thank you very much for your time. This is really upsetting. It's uh, scary. And as you heard from our group head of news there, the questions being asked, how do we trace its roots and source? Uh, that's such a pertinent question and uh, firstly apologies and you know my heart goes out to anyone uh, you know including uh, the likes of the SABC families that have been affected you know in terms of uh, these kind of scenarios so you know to answer the question I guess it's really around how do we actually verify information and how do we verify misinformation or how do we verify the single source of truth right um, and this is such a pivotal role that I think uh, media can play so we've seen some interesting plays uh, across different media houses um, from simple things like a verification badge or a simple watermark uh, sort of scenario that really depicts to is it uh, content that is created by humans versus is it actually created by AI. It's very hard, I think, you know, for, for those of us outside of the domain of AI, the languaging and, uh, you know, the technology associated to be able to know what to look out for. So we talk about watermarks and verification badges. Um, just share with our viewers in plain terms where and how they can find this out. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, you know, let's start with just simple things of uh, a tone. So, you know, really look out for the voice in a message and really pay attention to is it as authentic uh, or is it not as authentic? If you get an initial feel uh, that something's not right, uh, simply just don't engage. Um, that's the first. So voice. The second is from an image perspective, really look to tell if the image is very still like. So, you know, if that is very much the case, then uh, that's generally a good indication that it is AI generated. 
um, you know, other sort of aspects that you can look out for is make sure that you verify the links, right? Uh, don't, just don't click on something, um, you know, if you receive an email, make sure that the email address that you receive it from is actually legitimate itself. Um, you know, you've got to take your due necessary process, yeah. um, you know, from a user perspective and uh, take take back that control and make sure as well, um, whatever information you're actually sharing on your web or on any sort of, uh, you know, digital platform, you actually are aware what you're sharing at any given point in time. Let's um, make it you know, really so simple. Levine, I'm so sorry to jump in there because when you talk about verifying the links, what are the notable things you should look out for in that email? Some of them really mimic official, credible emails quite well. Yeah, absolutely. So things like uh, a, a proper email address, we generally know, you know, companies have uh, either a .co.za at the end of it with their uh, sort of company name in the middle. Uh, so that should be like a standard, uh, you know, also if you're not sure of their domain or their email uh, domain, Google it, right? Um, go and have a look if uh, their email address says info at uh, sabc.co.za as an example. Um, you know, then you compare it to that particular email address that you're then seeing as, as one example. The second would be, um, you know, people that request for any personal information just simply never engage, never divulge, whether it is from a bank, whether it is from an insurance company, a telco, um, literally anyone, right? That's the first. The second, I agree with everyone here that really stipulated, just simply don't invest. If anyone asks you for any type of funding, simply don't invest. Okay. Um, and I think those are simple things that you could really do. Uh, and you can never be over overly cautious. Yeah. There, there are two things I really want to get to. Hopefully there's time that I think are important that don't only focus on how uh, this technology, facial recognition technology, can be used um, to scam in this way. Um, the, the one is, what is this technology that makes it so possible? In stuff that we read, we, we think about Clearview, for example, cited in a couple of articles around um, their capabilities for AI scraping, in other words, whatever your um, internet or online presence is they can create a composite by scraping everything that's related to your ID and build up a profile on you, which also can, you know, can potentially play into, into these scams. So very quick word on this technology, this type of technology. Yeah. It is something called deepfake technology, and uh, that literally uses a bit of, um, you know, computer visioning, uh, which is part of AI, as well as uh, speech recognition and NLP. Uh, and in a nutshell, you know, um, it is something that uh, can be very detrimental. We've seen lots of cases uh, that actually depict to that. Um, yeah, so from a technology perspective, I would actually also say the reverse is true. As much as it's detrimental, why are we not actually seeing enough companies or AI companies coming up that actually help to prevent, uh, you know, these sort of cyber attacks or deep fake attacks 24-7? Yeah. In terms of web scraping, absolutely 100%. Uh, that is something that I, I think policymakers are working really hard at actually, you know, uh, getting rid of completely. And, uh, you know, as you said, it actually does more detriment uh, than anything else. So, you know, a user and your thread of information becomes really important. If you've automatically signed on using your Gmail account or any other sort of account, make sure that you go in and un uh, you know, log out as an example, um, you know, just yeah. never leave your Wi-Fi on all the time connected <laughs> to your PC as an example. There's just simple little things that you've got to just uh, really take back full control. So much more that we've got to be hyper vigilant around. And to close reading, uh, and the Daily Maverick did a really great article on this. Uh, this could also have potentially devastating consequences, uh, you know, for something as simple as being in a job interview. The recruiter cross-references your image from a Google search, sees potentially what your political and other affiliations are, and potentially not give you the job if it conflicts with their own beliefs. And this stuff talks about how invaded our lives can become for this tech, you know, because of this technology. On the other hand, yes, it can help law enforcement, it can track and trace people around the world from a traffic light to a store they might be purchasing goods in. But when it comes to this invasion on our, our private lives and, and 
you know, us appearing uh, in places, in other people's photographs even, um, that becomes really quite dangerous and invasive. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that intimate balance that we need to find between man and machine uh, is really, really important. Um, there's something called, uh, your, you know, your digital uh, space, uh, pretty much similar to your personal space uh, in the physical world. And uh, that is becoming more and more, uh, you know, uh, important. And we've seen, you know, the likes of uh, a lot of what happens in the physical world replicated in the digital world. Yeah. And that's, you know... Yeah, so we kind of really need to balance that uh, to our best ability. And I think this is why the trend thus far is really headed towards empowering the user and giving the user consent to understand in real time, uh, you know, only for now, for the split second, I want to share my bank details with my bank so that I can get pre-approved a loan, as an example. Post that pre-approval, once that's done, the bank doesn't know that I exist, right? Yeah. So that's pretty much where we need to be getting to and, and driving towards. In 30 seconds, how can we take this down? Our colleagues, uh, you know, all of our faces are emblazoned across these, um, these little, you know, these scams. What can we do to get rid of them? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. Um, I think it is obviously contacting the websites directly, uh, you know, requesting for those sort of things to happen, uh, forming, uh, you know, some sort of uh, a consolidated voice that then, uh, you know, goes to the likes of the regulators to then assist in actually, you know, bringing that down. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that in itself is not a very easy task. I mean, um, I could be really, you know, um, you know, play with things at this point in time and say maybe create an alternative AI, but I won't because <laughs> that would be too controversial. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I think for now it's just, you know, try to be as human as possible, uh, try to connect as much, uh, you know, try to reason as much. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure somewhere along the line, we'll be able to uh, take all of this down. So much again left uh, in this conversation that we'd love to explore, perhaps another time. Thank you so much for yours. Technologist for Africa and technology advisor to the African Union, Lavina Ramkisun.